This is the big news from today. Of course, there's a ton of big news, but this one really is affecting your life. Microsoft CrowdStrike issue causes largest IT outage in history. Live updates say businesses worldwide grappled with an ongoing major IT outage Friday as financial services and doctor's offices were disrupted while some TV broadcasters went offline. Wow. Banks were shut down. Air travel has been hit particularly hard with planes grounded, services delayed, airports issuing advice to passengers. The outage came as cybersecurity giant CrowdStrike experienced a major disruption early Friday following an issue with a recent tech update. CEO George Kurtz has since said the company is actively working with customers impacted by a defect found in a single content update for Windows hosts, stressing that Mac and Linux hosts are not affected. This is not a security incident or a cyber attack. The issue has been identified, isolated, and a fix has been deployed. One expert suggested it may be the largest IT outage in history. And I just would like to stress, if a single update could disrupt like a large portion of the global economy... You've basically just told all of our enemies the easiest way to, I don't know, shut down the global economy. Some are actually suggesting there's a conspiracy theory of uh, there, there is a conspiracy afoot that it actually was a cyber attack against the U.S. They're trying to cover it up because they don't want people to panic. However, what, I, what I've seen from some IT channels on X is that the update accidentally had code pointing to what, what, what do they call it? Like a null identifier. Mm -hmm. Did you see that too, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like basically it was a dead link. The, the memory said, pull from this place, and this place was nothing, so it just bricks out. Like entry-level yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, I, don't they yeah. usually <laughs> test updates before sending them out to the entire freaking world? Not on Fridays. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, automatically I was like, wait, this story kind of doesn't add up here. The first thing that I thought about was Cyber Polygon. Maybe this is a test run, but who knows? Maybe it could be an accident. Maybe it could be a, a coincidence, but CloudStrike is kind of a political group. They are kind of more aligned with the Democrats. They, bl they blamed Russia on hacking the DNC. They also have a major DEI office, so this is not not a, a bipartisan organization. This is a political organization that also very conveniently wiped off a lot of favorable news coverage for uh, Donald Trump as well. So again, I don't know what happened, but I, I hope we find out. I'd like to point out that bricking out is not always a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the crazy, the crazy thing about this is that they're saying when all of these computers went down, it's a single update that knocks all the computers offline, and then they have to manually reboot each machine to make it work. This is a huge and glaring cybersecurity issue coming from a company that's supposed to be helping them. But wasn't CrowdStrike involved in like the DNC stuff? Like they, what is it? They claimed that the um, the Russians the were Russians responsible for the yeah. DNC hack. Yeah, that's yep. that, and that's probably not true. But I love how you've got these, let's just call them friends of the deep state, who will come out and say whatever the deep state wants to hear, and they can tell that to the press, and then you wonder why it is your credit cards don't work. One of the theories going on right now, and, and I, don't, I don't really care to believe this stuff, but at least it makes for entertaining content, I guess, is that they're flexing their muscles as a threat to Donald Trump. I mean, the timing is coincidental, right? It's the day after he accepts the Republican uh, uh, nomination to be the presidential candidate and he delivers the longest recorded speech in, in televised history. I mean, you know, I'm, I am our resident technophobe. I barely know how to turn on my phone. Jeremy was just trying to fix my battery on my computer. <laughs> but I will say, you know, the longer Americans go through, uh, you know, they struggle to get into their financial institutions. The flights are all in disarray. It cr heightens the sense of fear that I think a lot of people have that the country really is on the brink of instability and especially after basically a week of very positive messages coming from uh the the republican campaign it, it is hard not to believe that someone out there wants people to go back to feeling not hopeful but scared yeah i wonder it's it donald trump generated a ton of news he gave a powerful speech everybody was praising it and then in the morning instead of the news cycle being donald trump's speech it's Planes are down and your and your and your credit cards don't work. It, right. it, it it's it is that what you were pointing out, Luke? Like people it, were freaking out in the morning. They were like, and and it didn't just start in this morning. It, it happened last night. A lot of people were having difficulties uh, flying back with transportation, getting mm -hmm. into their banks, being able to travel, being able to get emergency services. The Coast Guard had to manually have call yeah, in yeah. because their entire system went down. So it wouldn't surprise me if there were some lives cost because of this uh, coincidence. Oh, well, dude, and how many they're, people they're, get they're paid on Friday? Days, They're saying right? hospitals, for yeah, instance, exactly. were, were shut down. They couldn't get people in because their computers weren't working. Exactly. There was Absolutely a crazy. big outage uh, of 
uh, the emergency services in Massachusetts a, like about a month ago at this point. And it was during that huge heat wave that went through a lot of the country, but definitely affected the Northeast. Yeah. And it was dangerous, right? Because you have extreme heat. And in New England, not everyone has air conditioning. So you have potentially older at risk people uh, not being able to have intervention. It, it, it is interesting to me that about a month later, we're seeing another big outage on a, an even larger scale. Yeah, even this morning, uh, if you didn't have cash, you couldn't buy breakfast. Yeah. You still can't. <laughs> yeah, you, you still, still can't. Can. It's still down. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Are. If you guys are in the chat, you can comment. If, if credit cards are still down, yeah, they're down for us. Cash is king. It's the only way to get it done. And uh, I don't know. I'm not too mad about it because I don't like, you know, huh. having to do everything through these digital systems. And cash, I think, is a good thing they're trying to get rid of. Yeah. But uh, even even our team's basically asking how this is possible. We have, we have one super chat that I want to shout out right away. Patrick C says he was an IT, he was an IT sysadmin for twenty years. There's no way this was negligence because CrowdStrike is a huge company. Uh, they have policies in place. Even when we do updates on like our rinky dink little app, you can't roll out a bad patch. It's just we have we, we have a, a test environment. Yeah, and then you roll out there, and then when everything works. We then send it to the main environment. I, I don't understand how how, could, how this could happen. It, it's uh, 2024. We can't believe in coincidences. And mm -hmm. today should be a major wake up call to everyone to just how fragile our society is and just how dangerous the cashless society is that many globalists, many government officials want to ram through. And they already have rammed it through in other places like Australia, where p cash purchases over a certain amount are illegal. And it, they are criminalizing individuality, privacy sovereignty freedom at, at the fullest extent and the buck stops with you literally cash is king and i think today we realized that we got to have more of it since of course the banks don't even have that much uh, cash on hand remember either. the chain remember how hard it was to get change like just yep. small, when you know post lockdowns oh yeah i don't believe that you know i'm sure there were quote unquote reasons for that pre lockdowns there was a whole war on cash yes. saying this yeah. it spreads the disease it right. spreads the sickness and i'm like are you freaking kidding me do you but, know how many hundreds of i'm sure it's out there like in just in credit card fees were lost today like a astronomical amount of money that was lost today that's why it's represented in the stock market a lot of this comes from you know our government allowing the same three companies to run literally everything and it's just another perfect example of you know a system that favors these mon virtual monopolies um and then gives them all the power and then you know really every major bank and every major this and that should probably not be on the same thing oh let's 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 bring the conspiracy let's make the conspiracies worse look at this from the new york post crowd strike global tech outage snarls early voting in arizona with gob convention travelers delayed so uh oh, yeah. all of the gop reps and delegates trying to fly out are jammed up severely limiting their capabilities this will have a noticeable effect on republicans ability to have meetings to make phone calls to fundraise for at least a day a couple days because if they miss their flight today then they're going to be delayed till tomorrow some people probably said okay we'll just come back tomorrow but more importantly voting in arizona was actually upset by this and so some people have been spreading this rumor that dominion voting machines got shut down that is not correct it is something to do with the printers that print out the the polls they need for voting weren't working so it actually disrupted voting look is it going to disrupt fundraising too? I mean, if the RNC, I mean, oh, Republicans, Republicans are going to be making calls after President well, Trump's acceptance speech. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Uh, people this morning wild. who should have landed a couple hours. You know, they, they wake up at nine, they get to the airport. At, you know, they they get ready to go to the airport. They're there by noon. Their flights in a little bit. They land in the afternoon. They're on the phone after that. It's Friday. Right now, they're not. Now they're in the air. They're in the airport, calling the airline, trying to figure out why they can't fly. And all of these Republicans who just heard Trump speak. That's that's the key moment for Trump to be like, give me money. Well, not, not, just, not just those people flying home to make those calls, but if calls go through, are people able to make donations if they are reached? I mean, oh, it's like, the credit card is the work. actual not, engine yeah. right. that accepts the donation down. So even if you have volunteers back home in Arizona, can they even process the donations? That's an interesting. As layer. long as if they were using CrowdStrike, then uh, they can't. Everybody else seemed to have been fine. X uh, was fine. Everybody was was posting on X. Mm -hmm. See, you know, but Linux it, servers were all fine. Anybody who was yeah. on Linux, my website was fine. I don't. It's kind of wild that we rely so heavily on singular companies for for this stuff, and that they could automatically update in such a way that it basically breaks everything. There was apparently like some post. I don't know if that was you mentioning it, Jeremy, where a guy was like, "I could fix that computer right now," but the airline lady won't let me do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, yeah, that was online. She just wouldn't let him because it, 
I mean, uh, the, the point that you made too, it's like manual updates. This isn't like a just roll it back thing. People had to, you know, actually come into the office and reboot these machines. And a lot of people didn't have like admin access. So a lot of employees who have corporate computers, they didn't actually have um, credential levels or whatever um, on their laptops to deploy the fix themselves. So people that are all over the place, working remotely, traveling, they had basically bricked PCs and uh, maybe, maybe we now know who. Perhaps you are at the center of brick suit do you, guy. Do you have an alibi right now? Were you uploading you're an confused. update last night? I, yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna take the fifth on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. smart. Thanks for watching this clip from TimCast IRL. Make sure to check out the live show Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. on this channel. Subscribe, and we'll see you all there.